Welcome, pilots. We've been selected to participate in the Command Network Program trial runs. According to the brass, this is a new operating system that will be used in the central computers of our birds and tied to the navigation and comm systems of all our cap ships and stations. The CMP provides what they call a unified command and control framework and is supposed to help increase efficiency throughout the fleet. Of course, we've all heard the rumors. The CMP is supposed to turn a rook or nugget into an ace. We've been given the honor of putting that to the test over the next few weeks. You've been selected because you represent our top pilots. I'll address the rooks later. Your feedback on the auto-assist systems developed for the CNP will be critical in how it will be deployed in the fleet. For those of you volunteering for these tests, you'll be getting double pay. But I know that Shirley von Vergon is at the front of most of your minds before we ship out. I know some of you, like, uh, Obit, Oh, a few too many cubits on Palace, so I suggest you take this opportunity to move your finances out of the red and into the black. Those who have decided to take part in these tests meet in the briefing room in 10 minutes. That is all. The Battlestar Theseus is taking part in the Command Network Program test trials. You are to follow instructions and familiarize yourself with the CNP interface for your Mark 7 Viper. We will be monitoring your performance with the CNP, engaging it against your standard combat performance. Your reaction time in standard maneuvers and targeting protocols will provide key data the brass needs in order to decide whether or not to implement the CNP. Don't flub this, we need honest assessments. But if you get bright ideas and start throwing off your performance because you don't want to see the CNP used, just remember. You're going to end up as a little outlier that the eggheads will ignore. Keep in mind, pilots, the brass is likely going to implement the CNP, regardless of our recommendations. So, use this as an opportunity to familiarize yourself with how our birds are going to be flying from now on. Alright pilots, this is the part of the exercises you've all been waiting for. We've noticed that some of the comments by the text behind the CNP have gotten on your nerves. I believe the one about a nugget and a CNP equipped viper being better than any of Theseus's pilots was the worst. I've suggested that we put this to the test in the next round of simulations. We're going to put several nuggets through a series of tests, and we'll then play the exact same tests for you in a non-CNP viper. We're counting on you as a skilled pilot to defend Theseus's honor here. Today's trials will compare your performance in a non-CNP Viper to our nuggets in CNP-enabled ones. Tests will range from assessing basic skills like targeting and gaining a missile lock to a full-scale combat trial against multiple opponents. We will then have you against one of the nuggets in a dogfight to decide if the text claims really are true. Show us your best performance out there. Dismissed.
The Viper Mark 7 is fitted with two primary banks, which can be cycled for single or linked fire. Set your primary weapons to linked fire now. The Mark 7 also has two secondary banks. Each bank may be fitted with different ordnance that can be accessed by cycling banks. Do this now. Vipers can fire missiles individually or in volleys. Set your active secondary weapon bank to dual fire now. Return your primary and secondary weapons to single fire mode for the next test. Good. Now we are going to test your reaction time with secondary weapons. Obtain a missile lock on all three drones. Target a drone and center it in your reticle until the lock indicator informs you to shoot. Test begins in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Four, three, two, one. 
When you are in range of a target, your gun reticle will appear. This displays where you need to aim in order to hit your target. Just place it over your target and fire away.
could beat the Nugget. I think the real test of the CNP would be to put him up against the next highest scoring pilot in the CNP Viper and see if we can beat him. Easy as actual to red lead. This is the CAG. Ovid is already in launch prep for the next round of training. We'll have you two dogfight, then I want you back here for debrief. Looks like you managed to conclusively prove that the CNP is not a replacement for the experienced pilot. CNP techs will have to quit their bragging now. Given Obit's scores in CNP Vipers, beating him was very impressive. When you're off duty, first round's on me. Unfortunately, we won't be getting much more time to play with the CNP anyway. Orders have just come in for a three-month patrol along the Armistice Line. We'll probably be the last ship in the entire fleet to get the CNP upgrade at this rate. You'll have a few days to get your things in order before we ship out. I suggest you take the next shuttle to PyCon. Dismissed.
The armistice has ended. We are now once again at a state of war with the Cylons. The strength and number of the enemy force is unknown, and we have as yet been unable to establish contact with either the 34th Battlestar Group or the Colonial Fleet. We must assume the worst, an all-out assault on our home worlds. The Cylons have been able to track our jump destinations. How this is possible is unknown. The intensity of the attacks has decreased. At present, we are being followed by a single base ship. All wings are to remain on alert status with squadrons taking shifts on cap. Orange and green squadrons have been on station for the past 20 minutes. They will be relieved by yellow squadron in 30. Our first priority is survival. Over the past four hours, we have been hounded by a single Cylon base ship, which jumps to our new location after 12 minutes. The Theseus was meant to resupply several weeks ago, so due to the Cylon ability to track FTL, our Tilium supplies are stretched thin, and we can no longer afford to waste resources with additional jumps. In the hope of ending this pursuit, after our next jump, the Theseus will deploy full assault wings in preparation of the base star's arrival. Instead of fleeing, we are staging an all-out assault. Yellow and blue squadrons will be launched from the Theseus to provide close support. Red squadron will consist of assault vipers armed with AGM-41 torpedoes. Red squadron's primary objective is to disable the heavy missile batteries of the base ship. Disabling their armament combined with sustained fire from the Theseus, we hope will force the Cylons to withdraw. Green squadron will provide cover. In the event that the base star does not withdraw or Cylon reinforcements arrive, Purple Squadron is authorized for a nuclear mission. Purple will neutralize the base ship and all fighters will withdraw for an emergency jump. This attack is out of desperation. We have few options. But hopefully giving those toasters a kick in their chrome teeth will buy us time. That is all, pilots. We're counting on you.
Although we failed to neutralize the Cylon base ship, there have been no signs of pursuit. We have earned ourselves a brief reprieve, despite our losses. At present, we are hiding in the low orbit of a gas giant. The radiation belt should shield us from Cylon detection for the time being. We are preparing reconnaissance raptors to assess the situation on our home worlds. As of yet, we've still received no word from the fleet, and civilian channels have also been silent. On the subject of our down pilot, a search and rescue mission is being prepared for Obit as we speak. This will be a volunteer mission, but I would like for you to take lead on it. Welcome, pilots. This is a volunteer mission. During the last op, one of our pilots suffered engine failure and was unable to engine failure and was unable to land. We're going to bring him home. As Red 3 was lost at our last location known to the Cylons, it is possible that there will be a strong enemy force in the area. This mission is not simply to rescue Obit, but to determine the size of the Cylon force committed to finding the Theseus. Orange Lead Assault Raptor 1342 will conduct the search and rescue effort. Hammer has volunteered to be the ECO for this mission. If hostiles are present, you are to follow full emissions control protocols. Try to find Obit and get out of there undetected. Once you find our pilot, Orange 2 will be deployed to commence SAR operations when the area is secure. They will remain in a fallback position within wireless range until given the signal to jump in and retrieve Red 3. If we're going to do this, we need to do it quickly. Every minute we spend is a minute of Obit's O2 supply. If you're going to volunteer as the pilot for this op, meet me outside of the briefing room. I need you suited up and on the flight deck ASAP. detected our emissions yet. As long as we don't shoot or get too close, we should be fine. Holy frack! Comms traffic's a mess. I can't make heads or tails out of anything. I'm not sure if it's because civvy channels are flooded, the clanks are jamming everything, or both. I'm picking up a faint wireless signal. It's too weak for an exact fix, but we can try to trace it. I'm not reading anything on Dratus other than the toasters. But if we can get within a click or two of that signal, I can get a lock. I don't think they've detected it yet. As long as we keep our distance from the Cylons and we don't fire our weapons, this should go very smoothly. I'm reading a faint Dratus contact. Damn. Just lost it. Explosion. Infecting Tilly. Recalling officers. 
I lost the transmission. It seemed to be jammed at the source. Sir, if the Theseus is under attack, we should abort mission. This is Orange 2 to Orange Lead. Sir, for all we know, it's a fake transmission from the toasters. I suggest we proceed with the mission as ordered. Multiple Cylon contacts. Long range Stratus is still cracked up. How the hell did they find us? Theseus to Orange Lead. Thank the Lord our distress call was received. Our fuel lines were ruptured by an internal explosion, which also damaged our FTL. The Cylons then jumped in. Internal fires have blocked access to the hangar deck. We haven't been able to launch any birds. And long range wireless is being jammed. God damn. With the fuel lines ruptured in those fires, they defend artillery and reserves. Crack me. The emergency reserves are barely enough for. Pilots, you need to buy us time to get our FTL back online. DC crews are starting to contain the fires. We should be able to get more birds in the air shortly. Not too bad, sir. Not as good as me.
neutralized. Marine fire teams are reporting heavy casualties. Theseus, how long until FTL is back online? Systems are nearly online. Two minutes. Prepare for combat landing. I have grave news. The Cylons look like us now. A Cylon agent detonated an explosive device near our fuel lines. We nearly lost the Theseus, but the damage was contained. The Cylon agent was jamming wireless communications and transmitting our position to their fleet and signaled for the boarding action. This machine was neutralized. Our recalled recon flights have confirmed devastation on PyCon and Tauron. PyCon fleet headquarters were destroyed in the initial attacks. We have received messages that surviving colonial assets are currently being marshaled in orbit of Virgon. Our top priorities are to replenish Artillium reserves and establish contact with the fleet. We do not have enough fuel to jump to Virgon and we will be unable to maintain combat operations with our current supply.
The Theseus was sabotaged by a Cylon agent. Our fuel lines were damaged, and artillium reserves are dangerously low. There is barely enough fuel to maintain combat operations, and only enough for one or two short-range jumps. It is only a matter of time before the Cylons find us, and when they do, we won't be able to run. Recon Raptor flights have been launched to establish contact with fleet or civilian assets. As of this moment, we have been unable to establish contact with surviving fleet assets in orbit of Virgon. All orbital refineries have been destroyed. Our homeworlds are under attack. We have reports of nuclear detonations on PyCon, with casualties in the billions. Wireless traffic is flooded with distress signals. Although as far as we know, there are no organized evacuation efforts, a number of civilian ships fleeing Aralon are under Cylon attack. We've received a distress signal from the Indart, a short-distance cargo transport which is part of a convoy now escorted by a Bolotho-class frigate, the Sebasius. Red Squadron is to investigate and secure the area. You are to protect FTL-capable civilians and the Sebasius until they can jump to safety with the fleet at Virgon. You are to escort ships lacking jump drives to the Theseus. Once your wing returns, we will transport the civilians aboard the Theseus. At present, the Theseus does not have enough fuel to make the jump to Virgon. We will rendezvous with the fleet as soon as we have secured Atilium supply. That is all. Good hunting, pilots.